You didn't say that too real, sh real sure in there. Say it's going to be a hunger in me. You know what, folks? I remember back in the uh, mid-80s, God spoke to me. He said, never become complacent. You know where you satisfy? If you ever become satisfied in your walk with the Lord, you know you level off and you don't want to go any, any higher, where you're in a dangerous spot. He said, deep calls unto deep. God is deep. That's in Psalms 42. God is deep. And God is, he's going to always be calling us upward. Amen? He wants you to grow in him. Amen? Why? Because he wants you to help other people. Isn't that right? Did you know that the anointing is not just for you? God, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me that I may help other people. God is wanting to find faithfulness in you so he can use you to help somebody else. Yes. He has used me in my lifetime, folks, before I ever stepped up in this pulpit because I remained faithful to him. Amen? He has used me to help other people before I ever stepped up in this pulpit. Amen? Don't you want to be used by God, folks? I do. And you ain't saying nothing yet. Amen? You may be seated. Are we ready to go, Dale? Are we fired up and ready to go? Does that sound familiar? Okay. We've been talking about faithfulness. And God is big on faithfulness. And Luke 8, 8, 8, Luke 18, 8. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Well, actually, the root meaning of the word faith is faithfulness. Say faithfulness. Because, we, you know, um, in Romans 12, 3, it says, To every man was dealt the measure of faith. So, okay, every man has some kind of measure of faith. Wouldn't you agree to that? So he couldn't be talking about faith because we all have some faith to some, in some degree. Maybe in different degrees, but we all have faith. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faithfulness on the earth? So he's talking about being faithful to God. He's talking about loyalty, being steadfast. He's talking about allegiance. He's talking about allegiance to God Almighty. Amen? Amen? Now, he spoke these words to me. Growth is fastened with faithfulness. In other words, growth, increase, enlargement is fastened to faithfulness. Fasten means to tie up, connect it, zip to, link to, and attach to. So your increase or your growth is connected, linked to, and attached to your faithfulness. Amen? If you want anything to grow in your life, remain faithful to God. Amen? Amen? Maybe you are a tither. Maybe you're a giver. And maybe it, it just doesn't seem like anything is happening. Well, check your faithfulness. Did you hear me? See, as more money is important, you need to do that because you want to keep the curse off of you if, you, if you're smart, right? right. But it's, mo it's much more than that. See, you could be faithful in one area and not be faithful in another area. Did you hear me? Yes. Now, God doesn't expect for you, us to be perfect, but he does expect for us to mature. Right. He said, be ye perfect as, my, as your father's in heaven is perfect. He's not talking about perfection. He's talking about maturity. Did you hear me? So what you're doing at, at all times, you're going to be striving to improve. Amen? Amen? So faithfulness, consistently loyal to a person, promise, or duty. What has God called you to do? It could be just to finance the gospel. It could be. Isn't that right? Yeah. You remember in the, during the offering, offering time, I uh, read from um, Mark chapter 12, I think verse 41, beginning at verse 41, it talks about um, the widow that threw in the uh, two mites into the treasury. And the Bible says that Jesus watched them as they put money in the, in the treasury. Now I want you to listen to this. The widow, the, the widow woman, she, was she a widow? She was a widow, right? She put money in the treasury. Did you get that? The rich man threw it in. Say attitude. attitude. Why did they throw it in? <laughs> that don't mean nothing to me. She put it in, they threw it in. Say attitude. attitude. He said, the way you give, it shall be given to you. The measure that you give, it'll be given back to you again. So if you got a bad attitude, mm -mm, you better watch that. God loves who? A cheerful giver whose heart is in their giving. 
Did you get that? So actually, see, once God raised those, who, those rich folks up, or what, whatever the deal was with them, let's just say God raised them up. God made them become wealthy, strong. And then that money didn't mean nothing to them. They just threw it in. Ain't no big deal. But that lady threw in more than all of them. Did you hear me? The Bible says she was poverty stricken. See, that's how you come out of poverty. Amen? Amen. You sow seed. You can sow your way out of poverty. Did you know that? Lose your neighbor and say, you can sow your way out of poverty. So God wants you to be faithful. It means faithfulness, consistently loyal to a person, promise or duty. Say, I'll be faithful to my church. Say, I'll be faithful to come to church. Maybe that's a faith confession for some of you, but say it anyway. It's good. Carmella down here, how many, how, you, you hear how many five days out of the week? Four. Four? Carmella say, I've never gone to church that much. Oh, yeah, because we have three uh, weekly services, then we have prayer, so that's four. And then, Carmella, how old are you? 81. You're holding. She's 81, <laughs> and, she, and she cleans the church. Yeah. You should see a Miss, Miss Feather Duster. Pew Duster, excuse me. Make it Pew Duster. She said, I've never gone to church that much. And she said, but I love it, though. Amen. Okay? You say, why did you tell me that? It's a reason. Whatever you attend to, that's what you're going to desire. The more you come to church, the desire will come back for you to be at church. The more you read the Word of God, the desire will come back for you to read the Word of God. Your attention, whatever you attend to, that's what you're going to desire. If you, if you watch the soap operas and all that no crazy stuff on TV, guess what you're going to desire? You're going to crave it. You're going to lust after it. So if you're faithful in coming to church, reading your Bible, praying, doing whatever God told you to do, then you're going to desire. The desire is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Did you hear me? Say, whatever I tend to. Whatever I give my attention to. I will eventually desire that. Have you ever gotten on, don't raise your hands, I'll talk about me. I don't need ice cream personally, but I used to eat ice cream. Oh my God, that was one of my favorite things to eat was ice cream. I would eat it three times a week at least for sure. And the more I ate it, the more I wanted it. One time, now this is a good bench. I don't know if it's good or not. But anyway, one time I got on this bench with watermelon. The more I ate it, I don't know what's wrong with me, the more I wanted watermelon. You get it? The desire came more and more. But I'm like, Paul, God gave me a scripture though. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 21 maybe. I want to eyeball it. You say, I can quote, well, you don't, I, we don't even know if that's the right scripture, huh? 1 Corinthians, let me see if I can find it. I think it's chapter 6. No, that is not the one. I got all kind of, you know how you mark in your Bible, and um, you got a certain Bible, you know which side of the page is on, and you know you can find it. That's me. Okay, let me see if I can find it. And I'm going to show you what God showed me about this. And actually, I'm getting ready to talk a little about moderation. Oh, it is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, but it ain't verse 21. It says that um, all things, Paul said this in verse 12, 1 Corinthians 6, 12. He said, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any of them. What he was saying was, I will not allow or tolerate anything to control me. I don't go on those binges anymore. God gave me that scripture. All things is permissible, but it's not profitable. Did you hear me? He said, I will not allow anything to control me that is not profitable. In other words, he's talking about moderation. I don't go on all those benches that I used to go on. Oh, I just got. Now, the only, now one binge is a good binge that God told me I can go on. I don't know if you even call it a binge, but anyway, water. Sometimes I go, oh, I can't get enough of water. So that's, that's a good thing right there. But as far as food, things like that, uh-uh, not Pastor Pam. I'm not going to let anything control me but the spirit of the living God. Amen. I'm going to stay in control. You know, a fruit of the Spirit is temperance. Say self-control. Self-control. Amen. So I've been faithful with that over the years, and I'm going to remain faithful with it. Say, me too. Me too. 
Why did she say that? I have no earthly idea. So God, we talked this morning about being faithful to our families. Amen. But our first allegiance is to God Almighty. Did you hear that? I'm going to give you a, uh, an account, a story. This man, his name is David Hogan. And um, he was a missionary in Africa and all over the world, in Mexico, I think. And uh, he had visited our church on many occasions. And you talking about a faith man. The man is law to God Almighty. You talking about faithfulness? That will be him. His name is Mr. Faithful. His wife was, they were in the jungle somewhere. I don't know where they were this time. But anyway, he was preaching the gospel. And he calls her Mrs. Hogan. And she became deathly ill. He thought he was going to lose her. This man, he said, he said, Mrs. Hogan, he said, now you know I love you more than breath itself. He said, but I got to be faithful to God. He said, God told me to preach the gospel. And he said, these people need me. And then come to find out, they needed him that night. And so he said, Mrs. Hogan, I'm going to pray the prayer of faith, and I'm gonna, my allegiance is to God. I'm going to be faithful to God first, and God's going to take care of you. When he came back, I mean, the lady had a fever. He thought she was dying. When he came back preaching the gospel that night, she was sitting up laughing, talking. I think she was cooking. She was totally healed. If, you t if you're faithful to God's house, God is going to be faithful to your house. Good point, isn't it? While you're in here being faithful to God, God's going to be out there being faithful to you. He'll be, he's working on it for you, folks. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faithfulness on the earth? When he comes to promote you, will he find you faithful? Will he? One thing you don't want to do, you don't want, go, you don't want God to overlook you. And, um, okay, Moses. You remember when Moses was, um, I don't know where he was. I, I want to say the wilderness, but I don't remember right now. Remember when Moses um, saw an Egyptian? Pastor Dave, help me out. Moses saw an Egyptian doing something to a, uh, a Jew. Is that right? What? He was an Egyptian. Okay. And he saw an Egyptian doing something to a um, uh, uh, Israelite, and he rose up, and I think he murdered him. Uh huh. Listen at this. And Moses ran. You know how long he ran? He ran for forty years. When Moses became that great leader that we all preach about, he was eighty years old. Did you hear me? The Bible says he ran. The Bible. I want you to notice this. The, so it's not too late for Carmel, huh? The Bible said he ran. The Bible didn't say that God told him to run. He ran. But in that interim period, don't you know God was working on him? Did you hear that? Because when he was born, um, his mother put him in a, in, a, in a basket down the Nile River. And, um, and you know what? She knew it was something special about that kid when he was born. Isn't that something? He wasted 40 years. Before it's a long time, isn't it? But he finally got there. Folks, we don't have 40 years to waste. Did you know that? We don't have 40 years. Those days are gone. Yes. Whatever you're gonna do for God, I mean, you're gonna give it everything you got. Right. You know, I like watching the Olympics. You know, the Bible says, "He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved." I think about the Olympics. I watch it every four years. I, I like the Olympics because it reminds me so much. I always um. Uh, relate that to 1 Corinthians 9 where it says, Know ye not that he that run in a race run, run, runs all, but only one receive the prize. So run that you may obtain, right? And every man that strives for the master is tempered in all things. Now they do it for a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. When I watch the Olympics, I always think about that scripture. 1 Corinthians 9, I think it's starting in verse 27. But if you notice, when they're running, I like track and field. When they're running, they're not looking behind them. Have you noticed this? That during those races, a lot of them start off strong. Strong. But see, it's not how you start off, it's how you finish that counts. Isn't that right? Same way with a Christian race. It's not how you start off, it's how you finish. Maybe you, start, you started off fast, your race. Maybe you've backslid in some areas. But my question that I want to ask tonight, how are you going to finish that race? 
It's not too late for you to finish that race. Did you hear me? Have you ever saw, I've seen some of the runners, they started off slow, I mean, they had a bad start, and all of a sudden, they got to pumping it, and I mean, they, and they won. See, they started off slow. So it's not too late for you. Don't wait 40 years now. Amen. He that endures until the end, or he that is faithful until the end, the same shall be saved. I can add this, the same shall be promoted, if you're faithful all the way to the end. Now, Jesus is our example. The Bible says, look unto Jesus, who is what? The author, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus finished his course. You get it? The author and the finisher. He finished his course, didn't he? Yes. Elijah finished his course, didn't he? Yes. Because Elisha was faithful to Elijah, he got the double. He went to Jordan. The man of God said, I'm going down to Gilgal. He said, I'm going with you. He said, I am not going to leave you. He said, well, I'm going to the Jordan. He said, I'm going with you. Wherever, I'm going to Jericho. No, nah, I'm going with you. See, a lot of people don't want to follow a man. But <laughs> I just want you to know that's who God uses is men and women of God. He followed him until the end. And he was faithful. And his end result was the man of God turned around. He said, now, what do you want? He said, I want double of what you have. Now, Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah did. Did you know that? Because he was faithful. Say faithfulness. Faithful. The crow of our God. You know what? If you're faithful to God, God will reward you. Amen? And did you know in the book of Revelation, it talks about, in the end, that um, everything that we've done is going to go through the fire. Anything that God didn't tell you to do is going to, be, is going to burn up. And the things that you did do and that you were faithful in, you're going to, it's going to come out pure gold. We're going to cast crowns at his feet. Maybe God told you, maybe God has anointed you to be a soul uh, winner. Some people, I'm telling you, they are anointed in that area. Barb is one of them. She's anointed in that area. Did you know that? There's another lady that comes here, Mindy. That girl is anointed in that area. Now, if you found faithful doing that, well, you, they, they call it a soul winner's crown. You get to throw that at Jesus' feet. You were faithful in that. Amen? See, it's not whether or not you're called to the pool pit. It's whatever he's told you to do. He just so happens he told me to do this. And I'm going to be found faithful doing it. Amen? So he that endures until the end shall be saved. So growth, say enlargement, enlargement. increase. So God is wanting you to say increase. increase. God is looking for fruit. In Matthew 3, 8, he says, bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. In Luke 13, 6, he said, a certain man had a fig tree. He planted in his vineyard, and uh, he came looking for fruit on it, but he didn't find any. And then the vine dresser said, okay, for three years I've been looking for the fruit of faithfulness, and I haven't found it. So in other words, God was saying, Okay, we're going to cut that tree down. And he said, um, it's just taking up room. It's taking up soil. It's right. I like that. It's taking up space. You get it? So if you're not faithful in what God has called you to do, you're taking up his space. So move over. You'll know, use somebody else. If you don't use it, you lose it. Okay, Psalms 101. I want to read that again, verse 6. I said it right tonight. I like to read it out of the Amplified. You know, even when I was a little girl, I never had a problem with going to church, even before I actually walked to the altar and accepted Jesus. I used to love it. And even when we were a little girl, my sister would tell you that we were so poor, we only had one pair of shoes, period. And um, we would, me and my sister would walk around without any shoes because we wanted to save our shoes so we can look nice when we went to church. Just thought I'd throw that out. Okay. You know, when the, um, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, blessed is the man whom he chooses to come near to him. Once God, see, God was drawing us and we yielded to it. And over the years, hunger developed more and more. That's why I'm so hungry. Pastor Dave singing his songs, I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm thirsty for you. Psalms 101, verse 6. My eyes shall look with favor. 
Did you get that? Shall look with favor upon the who? Faithful. The faithful of, say the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. You get that? In other words, when you're faithful to God, that's telling me that you've got a relationship with the Lord. They will dwell with me who walks blamelessly. He shall minister to me. Ooh, that's deep, isn't it? Look at your neighbor and say, God is watching you. So if you want his undivided attention, become faithful. Now, you know, it's just the opposite with Adam and Eve. God put them out of the garden because they were unfaithful. He said, they shall serve me. I put it like this, they were unfaithful. They stopped serving God in that garden too, didn't they? See, they were unfaithful, so God had to get them out of the way. Did you get that? So God can and will use a faithful man or woman of God. Amen? Amen. Say, God will promote me. God will promote. Turn to St. John chapter 15. You know, um, I guess I'm giving you spinach a lot of, when I was growing up, I don't want spinach, Mom. She said, eat it, it's good for you anyway, and I'm telling you to go ahead and eat this, it's good for you. Okay, look at verse 15, chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, this is in the red, so Jesus is speaking. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Any branch of me that does not bear fruit, now, remember we said in Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, faith, say faithfulness. Amen. Did you get that? And then you have temperance, meekness and temperance. So he's talking about the fruit of faithfulness. He said, any branch, and the name of this message is growth is fastened with faithfulness, or your increase is connected to how faithful you are. Say the fruit of faithfulness. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, but stops bearing fruit, he cuts away, trims off, takes away repeatedly. Every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more fruit, richer and more excellent fruit. And now you are clean and pruned already because of the word which I have given unto you. Look at verse 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much fruit. Did you get that? Yes. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Do you know that, you know, he's talking about prayer, okay? I remember one time back in the, um, I guess it was around 87, 86 probably, I went to the grocery store to buy produce. And I was standing in front of the grapes and some of the grapes were disconnected from the vine. And folks, I promise I heard God's voice. And I looked, I was looking at him, and I heard the Holy Ghost saying, this is what happens to people when they stop abiding in me in prayer. He said, they're broken off as a branch. See, that's what this says right here. Did you get that? And one time, Pastor David and I was ministering when we were at the motel. I, well, it was just so clear. The Holy Spirit said, it's vitally important that you stay connected to the vine in prayer. He said, because I'm gonna send a lot of people through here, that they're, they're gonna need the anointing. You have to be anointed in order to lay hands on them so they can be set free. Did you hear that? That's what God told me. So I've been faithful to God over the years in that area. Say faithfulness. Amen. Folks, it's for your own good. You know what I understand about Christians? It's, so, it's just so amazing to me that how is it that we think we can do less but we expect better results. I don't, a different, I don't understand that. And we act like reading our Bible, coming to church, and uh, seeking God is torture. I don't get that. You don't know what torture is. You know that man that I was telling you about this morning? You need to talk to him because he'll tell you what torture is. He was tortured by devils. Did you get it? God is looking for us to be faithful in these last days. Amen. It's for your own good. And people just tickle me, just funny. Um, Pastor Pam, can you pray for me? Well, you know, somebody say pray, I'm going to pray, right? But if you keep saying that stuff, then I'm going to tell you this. We all have the same access to God. Remember in Luke chapter 11, the uh, apostle said, 
uh, G- teach us to pray. He said, okay, I'm getting ready to teach you. Then Jesus said, our Father. Folks, I can preach on our Father. We have the same Father right. who are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. We have the same access to God. Same Father, same access. Isn't that right? You know, you can pray for yourself. And wait a minute, if you, if you speak in tongues, that means that we have the same Holy Spirit because he'll pray for, through us because we don't know how to pray. He'll make intercession. I got the same one that you have. Did you get it? See, those folks that say that all the time, you call it being lazy. You call it being unfaithful. Oh, y'all getting quiet now. I didn't say that I wouldn't pray for you. I'm talking about if you keep that, um, then we have, to, we have to put you in your place and tell you no. Pastor Pam, and wait a minute, we all have the same 24 hours in one day? Why are you sitting up here telling me, uh, one lady, come on, can you pray for me? Uh, uh, pray for me like you never prayed for anybody. And I said, <laughs> I said, and while I'm praying for you like I never prayed for anybody, what are you going to be doing? Sure, I said it. Um, oh, 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 okay, Pastor Pam. I went, yeah, all right, it's okay, yeah. <laughs> See, you need to be faithful in your own prayer life. Amen? Amen. See, you're with you more than I'm with you, yeah. right? And, you know, you can't, fortunately, fortunately, you can't take the pastor home with you. That's a blessing for us, I'm concerned. <laughs> you can't take me home with you, so you better develop a prayer life yourself. Amen. Are you listening? Yeah. So he's talking about prayer being vitally connected to the vine. So God is expecting for us to be faithful in our prayer life. Even though you've heard it doesn't take all that. I keep talking about this older man. He thinks it does take all that. He's free though, isn't he? Amen. There's another little boy. His mom was here. They sat right over there. Actually, it was Barb's uh, grandson. 13 years old, ever since he was two, he's been dealing with the spirit of fear. Those devils, when he started coming here, those devils had begun to start talking to him, calling his name, Jesse. You know, crazy. <laughs> Am I lying? Come out true. They started talking to him. Well, they got here just in the nick of time. Yeah. And I was talking to the kid, and the Holy Ghost said, you're talking to, I was up here praying. See, I was faithful. He said, are you talking to the wrong one? He said, tell the mother how to get rid of it and tell her this, this, and the other. And you know what I told her? So simple, simple. I said, um, the devil hates the word of God. And Jesus fought the devil with the word of God. And those demons left him. I said, a word for him. And I said, have that kid read out of his mouth every night before he go to bed four chapters of the Bible. Make him do it. Because those devils will not sit around and listen to the word of God. He's 13. You get it? If he can do it, you can too. Well, I just want you to know, those devils have been gone for a long time. They came back to visit every now and then. And the same thing, I told her what to do. I said, get up out of the bed, hop up, whatever. Go in another room and say, get out and don't come back. Say it kind of as loud as you possibly can without disturbing your husband. But if he gets disturbed, well, whatever. As long as the devil will leave, right? She did it and the kid is free. He was two years old, he's 13. So for 11 years, those devils been stalking him. This one lady came in here, she said, Pastor Pam, I've never in my life been to a church where people come in here with all these harassing devils on them, and they're free. I go, well, I don't know what to tell you. I guess because God knows I'm going to, I'll preach it. This other lady comes here, she's in here tonight. She said she thought she had mice. And I was talking about all these demons, and so on and so on, and she thought, wait a minute, that lady got something I need, I'm going to this church. Right. And she figured out it was devils. And I told her what to do. Yeah. God is faithful, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you see that? Now, it's just the opposite of what is being taught. Well, uh, you don't have to read your Bible every day. This is being religious. I'm religious, folks. I religiously do it. And I am religiously free, too. Yeah. And you know what's so interesting? Everybody that I tell to be the practice faithfulness in that area, they are free. So I just stuck a pen in that balloon, didn't I? In uh, St. John chapter 15, verse 2, he said, if you do not bear fruit and stop bearing fruit, what he's telling you is, if you become unfaithful and stop bearing the fruit of faithfulness, then it's what God says. He said he cuts away. Now listen to this. But if you're faithful, he won't cut it away. But let me interject this. If you're faithful to God, um, I've had people that come here and they just sit and sit and uh, actually one lady in the night she said her husband said now um, he doesn't go to church but he looked at her and he said 
you are different. Keep going to that church. Now, if a husband say you're different, you're different. That's right. He say you're different. That's right. What else did he tell you? <laughs> yeah, it's her. <laughs> Y'all know I can't keep a secret. What else did he tell you? Come on out with it. He said, you changed. Wait a minute. Uh, you, she was telling me, don't be telling me nothing, folks, because I'm going to tell it. He told her, he said, he told his daughter, he said, you know what, all along I thought I was the problem? He said, ever since your mama been going in that church, she don't even fight with me, so I know it was her and not me. Wow. That's what her husband said. Wow. What's my point? If you're faithful to God, God will cut things off of you right. while you're sitting right here being faithful. You will be changed. Yeah. Did you hear me? Do you know if you're faithful to God in the area of prayer and reading your Bible or whatever he's told you to do, which he did tell you to do that, right? He said, abide in me and I'll abide in you. Ooh, this is good. He said, ask what you will and it shall be done. Now, if you abide in him faithfully to abide in him in the word and in prayer, you can ask what you want and God give you the increase. He'll give you growth in that area. Amen. See, that's the word of God. Amen. Amen. So the fruit of faithfulness is, high, is, is, I think, is the most important thing that you can do for God is to remain faithful. Jesus Christ remained faithful. He knew what his purpose was when he came on the earth. This is what he said. He said, I came to die. Peter said, oh, Lord, be it far from me. He said, get behind me, devil. See, he stayed focused. You've got to keep your focus. Don't let anybody get you unfocused. He said, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Narrow. So you know what that tells me? That road is narrow. Then, you know, you can veer to the right or to the left, and you can get off that road real easily. Me and Pastor Dave like motorcycles. Can you imagine me, a motorcycle mama? <laughs> Put on my leather outfit, have on my helmet. <laughs> That's not sinful. That's fun. So anyway, we go on these narrow, windy roads. They're winding, they're going to the left and all these curves. Boy, you better know what you're doing because you can get off real easy. You can end up in a ditch if, you don't, if you're not paying attention. It's the same road with eternal life. Narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and there are few that find it. Now, now that's scary. There are few that find it. He said, but broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many, they're going to find that. You know why? Because a lot of people won't surrender their will to God's will. They don't want to do it. I just want you to know you don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything. God loves you so much, he gave you a free will. You can do what you want to do. He will preserve and he will, he will, he will um, how, how do I want to say that? He will preserve your right to go to hell if that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. So when you go, it won't be God. It's going to be you standing in need of prayer. Well, at least you know. It is deep, isn't it? And um, turn to Matthew 15. And then I got to sw switch gears here. Matthew chapter 15. This is also found in Isaiah 29, 13, I think. Somebody look at Isaiah 29. 13 to make sure it's the same scripture. Okay, chapter 15. Look at verse 7. This is Jesus talking to the Pharisees, Sadducees, you pretenders, hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy you. So it is in Isaiah somewhere, I think it's 29, 13. Well did Isaiah, it is 29, 13. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, these people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their hearts. Oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. When I, <laughs> Wait a minute. You're saying that with your mouth. Right. But this is what Jesus said. You're saying that you're honoring me with your mouth and you're honoring me with your lips, but your heart is far off. You're far away from God. You're just saying, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, you should go to act like one then, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I used to teach this song to the kids in children's church. <laughs> I'm getting ready to sing. <laughs> you all are tickling me. <laughs> I used to teach this song. Wait a minute. Jesus said here, 
Isaiah did, he prophesied right about you. Look at y'all looking at me. Y'all are trying to get me in trouble. He said, you draw near to me, you honor me with lip service only, but your heart is far away from me. I'm a Christian. Wait a minute. You, you meet a lot of people, they say, well, I'm a member of this church. Well, being a member of this church will not take you to heaven. When I used to witness in, witness in my earlier days, oh, I'm a member of this church. I go, well, what does that mean? I say, are you born again, though? Well, wait a minute. I've been baptized. Boy, people sure can't screw scripture up. Oh, I'm not so screw. I mean, they can really mess scripture up. If I'm not using the word jacked up, I'm using screw up. Okay. They can really mess scripture up. <laughs> I think I'm in trouble. Can I go home with you, Evelyn? <laughs> How many don't let me go home with him? <laughs> Pastor David's right. <laughs> he said that you pretenders, you hypocrites, you draw near to me with only lip service. In other words, you are not even faithful to me. You're just saying you're a Christian. I've been baptized. I belong to this church. Doesn't mean anything, does it? You got so many cruisomatics in the body of Christ. Folks, you need to find your place. You need to stay in your place. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord should flourish. And if you don't stay planted somewhere, oh, I'm trying to find a good church. Well, I'm trying to find a perfect church. Well, when you find it, don't join it because you're running. Why? Because you're imperfect, right? There are no, per no such thing as a perfect church. What it is, you think you're perfect is what it is, but I just want you to know you're not. And that's good news. Because then I know that you're not equal to Jesus. He was the only sinless, perfect Christ. Amen. Not you. Right. Anyway, I'll start melting the game. What was that song? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, see, so a lot of people, forget all, I rebuke y'all. Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> Wait a minute. A lot of people, stop it. A lot of people serve God with lip service only, That's right. but their heart is far from God. When I was in Sunday school, when I used to teach Sunday school, I used to teach the kids this song. Isn't it grand to be a Christian? Isn't it grand? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and, and all day Sunday. Isn't it grand? What was I teaching them? Right? Christianity is 24-7. Yeah. Did you hear that? It's not that you come in here, ooh, praise your Lord, ooh, glory to God, and you go out there. One lady said, anyway, I won't tell you who she is. She's in here tonight. She said that she went to this church before she came. <laughs> it's Renee. <laughs> no, it's not Renee. Um, she said that she went to this church. This stuff is funny sometimes. And she said, they, I mean, they have a Holy Ghost good time. And uh, she said they shout all over the place and, you know, kind of those churches. And she said, when she left church, she said it never failed. When she got out on the parking lot, she said folks were spying and striving and cussing each other out. So my point is, you come in here, you raise your hand, you shout, you buck, juck, shuck, and jive and all this stuff. And you go out there and you act like a heathen. But you're talking about you're a Christian. See somebody in the grocery store and they go, praise the Lord. You do that too, Harmony. Huh, <laughs> you know what, God, God, is, <laughs> God is wanting more than lip service. <laughs> well, if you can't have fun in church, where well, you gonna have it, right? Okay, I gotta get serious. Sir. God is wanting. I am serious. You're right. God is wanting more than lip service from us. Did you hear me? It's not just enough to come to church and name the name of Christ, but God is looking for action. He said faith without corresponding action is dead being alone. Did you get that? Yeah. I could say this, faithfulness without corresponding action. The co actually, the corresponding action is the act of faithfulness. God is looking for us to come up higher, folks. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. He's wanting us to be a living epistle read among all men. You want people to read you. I've had people on many, many, many occasions say this. You're saved, aren't you? 
And I always say, how do you know that? They go, I don't know, I just know it. Many times, you want people to look at you and they know that you're different and that you belong to Jesus Christ. You want to be an example. Say, I'm going to be a Christian 24-7. Folks, even when I became a manager, they knew I was a Christian. I didn't go around talking about the Lord. They knew it. They knew it. I guess the way I handled different situations, you know. And, you know, some of my um, employees, you know, they'll try you, folks. People are funny. You know, God, I was Lord. I'm Lord to God. And so if you're Lord to God Almighty, it's easy for you to be Lord to your employee or anybody else. Say God first. Did you get that? Yes. And um, they come in this world, this one girl called in. And uh, some of this stuff you should just know, whether you're a Christian or not. She called in, and actually she was a Christian. She go to church. And um, she said, um, uh, she said, I don't know, she said, Miss Rock. She said, Miss Rock, um, I don't know what's wrong. I don't feel good today. I, I don't think I'm going to make it. It was just like before the holiday. And where I worked, because, you know, they got real hip to people taking advantage of the holiday. You know, if the holiday fall on a Monday, they will call in sick for Friday. If they didn't call in sick for Friday, they'll call in sick on Tuesday because they want, you know, greedy. A three-day weekend is not enough. They want a four-day weekend. Right. I, you know what? She said, I'm sick. I almost said, no, what you're telling me, you're calling, I'm calling in to report a sick day. I wanted to say, you know, you're calling in to report a lying day. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how I know she was lying. She said, um, well, I don't feel well. I think it was on a Friday, and the holiday was on a Monday. I don't feel well, and I don't know. I'm just under the weather. I said, well, I just need to remind you, today is Friday. If you don't come in today on Friday, your policy is that you won't get paid for the holiday on Monday. Well, <clears throat> I guess I can muster up enough strength. <laughs> I know y'all think I'm fluffing it. She said, well... I guess I can muster up enough strength. I guess I can beat her. I come sick. I said, yeah, you do that if you want to get paid. See, that's just, that's being this law. So what it is, you know, some folks, they call in. I call it lying days. That's not a sick day. That don't count. They didn't pay you to call in, you know. Lying days, you're going to get paid for. Isn't that awful? God is watching you. God is expecting for us to be faithful to our, he said, your master's on earth. He's talking about your employers. Be faithful. If you, if, don't raise your hand. If you've done that or you're doing that, you are a liar. You listen to me? That is being unfaithful. Looks like you're getting by with it, but what's happening is something you don't see. God is overlooking you, and he's going to promote somebody else. Daniel had an excellent spirit, excellent Okay, he had a faithful spirit, mm -hmm. yeah. and Daniel became president. Yes. Did you get that? The man was faithful. He had an excellent spirit. Did God deliver Daniel from the lion's den? Yes. He delivered Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego time and time again. Remember, um, Daniel was faithful. Well, I guess we're talking about prayer. He was faithful in his prayer life. The Bible said he prayed three times a day. And they thought, okay, now he's He's uh, perfect at work. Who does he think he is? We're going to catch him. So they thought they was going to find fault with his religion. See, he was religious. He prayed three times a day. I don't understand these folks. Oh, that's being religious. You don't have to pray that much. Uh, you can pray without ceasing. Most of the body of Christ don't know what praying without ceasing is. Trust me. God wants more than that. I use this example. Pastor Dave and I are married without ceasing. Wouldn't you agree to that? If I get up in the morning and I don't feel married, guess what? I'm still married. I'm married without ceasing. I don't think he will like that if I don't spend any time with him. Right. Same way with God. God is not too happy when you don't spend time with him. He's a jealous God. He wants your undivided attention. That's right. That's right. And everybody say it. Amen. Mm -hmm. You hang around long enough, what's on this ministry is going to get off on you. That's right. That's good. I think I preached on fasting one time. And we got people. This one lady said, the first service that I came here, she said, the spirit of prayer came on me heavy. She said, I've been praying ever since. See, there is an anoint. An anoint means to smear, rub, massage. Whatever is on the head, there's nothing bad on this head nor that head sitting over there. The good stuff is going to rub off on you. The spiritual stuff is going to rub off on you. Did you hear me? Moses was faithful in all of God's house. 
Boy, now I said this morning, that is tall cotton. He was faithful in all of God's house. And God, Moses is so faithful to God. Uh, Marion and Aaron, Moses' elder sister and I think elder brother or younger brother. Anyway, brother and sister. They were talking against the man of God. Moses didn't hear it. God heard it, though. Did you hear that? God heard it. And God said, okay, board meeting. He said, Moses, I'm calling a board meeting. Get Marion and Aaron and come to this board meeting. He, didn't, he got a surprise, like Goldman Powell, surprise, surprise. <laughs> they didn't know what the surprise was. He said, let's have a board meeting. They all came in there happy. He said, here, come here. God said, come here, here's the deal. He came down in a cloud. He said, here's the deal. He said, now, any other prophet, he said, I speak to them in dreams and visions, but not so with my servant Moses, who is faithful in all of my house. Phew, that's deep. So that tells me that a lot of people back then, like it is now, unfaithful to God Almighty. How would you like for God to say that about you? He said, now Moses, faithful in all my house, I speak to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Moses is my friend. See, faithfulness is a relationship with God Almighty. Moses had a relationship with God. Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth too. Oh God, this is deep. He was the most faithful man in all of God's house, and then he was the meekest man on the face of the earth, but he was the most used man in his generation on the face of the earth, in his generation. How about that? Wow. So Moses, we're not even talking about Jesus. We're talking about a man like us, right. Moses. So yeah. you can be faithful. Yeah. Yeah. You can walk in the spirit of humility, yeah. and God can use you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Isn't that something? Good. That is good. The word of God is always good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess we need to take inventory if we haven't been growing. You, know, you need to do some soul searching, find out what it is, because God will reveal it to you. Say church attendance. Church attendance. Say God expects faithfulness. faithfulness. You know, actually, um, I quoted a scripture earlier. He said, those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall... Oh, God, this is so good. She flourish. Those that are planted, those that are faithful, planted, faithful to the house of God, they're going to flourish. Say grow. grow. Say grow. grow. It's fastened to faithfulness. It's fastened to faithfulness. That was that pretty good right there. Yeah. God is good. Here's an example. Jesus is our example. In Luke 4, 4, 16, the Bible says, And Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he entered the synagogue, say the church. the church, say on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. Now we, we, most churches, well we have church on Sunday, say Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. And he stood up to read. You see this, as his custom was. So Jesus' custom, he was faithful in coming to the house of God. And he stood up to read. Now we may not let you stand up and read, so, but you need to come here and listen to us read or something, right? That would be smart, wouldn't it? Amen. Say, so I'm be faithful to God, be faithful. and God's going to be faithful to me. Isaiah 50, no, that's not the right scripture. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Turn to Matthew 25. And I'm going to use this Bible because I got this one marked up. I am in rare form tonight for some reason. Okay, um, it starts off with the parable of the ten virgins, and then it goes on into the parable, the parable of the talents. So let's start with verse 14, Matthew 25, verse 14. This is Jesus talking. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. I want you to hang on this next verse. And he gave unto one... Five talents. Say five talents. five talents. To another, say two talents. Two talents. And to another, one talent. One talent. To, now I want you to hang on to this. To every man according to his several ability. Say several ability. Several ability. In other words, he's saying every man according to his personal ability to handle those talents. Did you get that? And straightway he took his journey. 
See, actually what this man was doing, he was giving them a test. Did you hear that? Well, I guess I may as well explain this. Sometimes God will give you certain things, not that he doesn't know what you're going to do with it. He's going to show you what you're going to do with it. He's going to show you what you're going to do with it. He knows what you're going to do. Does that make sense? Yes. God, oh, God, I want it now, God. Sometimes he will do it, and he'll show you that you don't need it now. He knew that you weren't ready. That's why he didn't give it to you. That's why you had to, oh, whine, bellyache, and cry. Oh, God, now, God, now, God. And God's going, wait, 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 wait. I want to perfect you some more in this area. I want you to mature some more in this area. Just wait. It's coming. It's coming. But, no, we want it now. I always like, you know, uh, we, I, I think it's true that we are a microwave generation. We want everything now. We got drive through. Uh, you're taking too long. Well, what do you want them to do? Just throw it in your mouth or what? And you pass on? Well, no, but <laughs> go through the drive. Give me my food. So he gave one man five talents, another man two talents, and another man one talent. According to his several ability, he gave them the talents based on what they could handle. Did you get that? According to their personal ability. See, they didn't know that yet, though. All right? Then in verse 16, Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them five other talents. Okay, this came up in me again. I don't know why I'm going to explain it, but it's for somebody. Remember I just said, that this man gave one man five talents, another two, and another one talent, according to their several ability, as they were able to handle that, those talents, right? right? Actually, it was a little test, all right? Here's the difference between a test and a temptation. The Bible says that Abraham, God tried Abraham, or God tested Abraham, all right? Now, the difference between a test and a temptation. A test is something that God will give you to show you your character. A temptation is something from the devil that will cause you to sin. Did you get that? All right. Verse 16, verse 17. And likewise, he that had received the two talents, he also gained two talents. So the first man gained five additional talents in verse 16. Verse 17, the two-talent man he invested the money, and he gained, he gained two more talents. Verse 18. And he that had received one talent went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Say lazy. Mm-hmm. Why would God give you a talent if, you, if you're not going to do anything with it? Now, a lot of people that sing uh, in the secular world, a whole lot of them started off singing in the church. Who do you think gave them that talent? It, God gave them that talent. I'm sorry, folks. You might not believe it. The devil didn't give it to them. God gave them. Every last one of them, God gave it to them. That's right. But they chose not to use it for the kingdom of God. This man, you probably heard of him. His name is um, the one that, that sings, like, sings like Sam Cooke. Bo Williams. Bo Williams, he said that he was up singing. The man is anointed, folks. He was up singing, and he, had, he was at some church, and he said, it was a, a, I don't know, he had a concert, I don't know what it was. But he was up singing, and he said people were around him asking for his autograph. And, um, well, it, it, you know, anyway, he's a man of God. They were asking for his autograph. And um, he was signing autographs and shaking hands with people after he was done singing. And um, he said that this older, I don't know, I, I can't remember if it was an, an older woman or an older man came up. You know, looked like a frail person came up and said, Sonny, Sonny, Sonny. And he said, out of all those people that were, that were around him, his eyes fastened in on this one person. I, I think it was a woman, I'm not sure. When, let's just say it was a woman. And uh, he said, yes, ma'am. He said people were all around him. And he said, yes, ma'am. And she said, Sonny, Sonny, God gave you that anointing that was on Sam Cooke. Don't do what Sam Cooke did and take it to the world. And he said, uh, uh, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And somebody grabbed him and wanted to say something to him, and he turned his head, and he said he looked back immediately, and that person was gone, vanished, just like that. Personally, I believe that God sent an angel, a messenger, to tell him that. 
See, Sam Cooke, so you know what that tells me? That that talent, that singing anointing, God gave it to Sam Cooke, but Sam Cooke took it to the world. I don't know if you know this, he also died young too. And when he said that, I mean, it's like, ooh, goosebumps on top of my goosebumps. And I said, uh uh-huh, that was a warning. God gave Bo Williams that talent. That man is anointed. You know, a lot of people got good voices, but everybody's not anointed. You, I, I like what Pastor Dave always says. I'd rather be anointed than be good. Did you hear me? Have you ever heard Benny Hinn sing? Uh-huh, but he's anointed though, isn't he? Sounds good to me. The anointing is all over that voice. He always says, like me, that I can't sing, but I'm like, well, I don't know about all that, but the anointing is on his voice. So, folks, I'm not good, but I'm anointed. Okay, there was another detour. In verse 18, but the one talent man, he hid his Lord's money. In other words, he didn't invest it. He wasn't faithful with one talent. And after a long time, Remember we were talking about that great spirit? Uh, King David's great spirit was one year. Yours may be 15 days. I don't know. See, we're not living under a covering called grace. Grace is not a covering. It's a time period. In other words, you have more and more time to repent. Okay, after a long time. So in other words, I never saw this. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and he reckoned with them. He wanted to settle his accounts. Did you get that? After a long time. So he gave them a long time. That one talent man, he gave him a while to straighten that thing out, but he didn't do it. The fruit of the Spirit, one of the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is actually love. But out of love comes the other eight gifts. Love, love, joy, peace, long suffering. God is so long-suffering and merciful with us. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came, the Lord of that servant came, and he wanted to reckon with him. He wanted to settle his account. Verse 20, And so he that had received the five talents, he said, he came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me five talents, and behold, I have gained five more talents. That's awesome, isn't it? He was faithful. Verse 21, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Did you get that? He was faithful. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Remember I read to you three scriptures out of Matthew, out of Luke, and out of John, where Jesus was talking about bearing fruit? See, the fruit of faithfulness is what he was talking about. And verse 21, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So it sounds like this man bore fruit, the fruit of faithfulness. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Did you get that? He was faithful over little things. God said, I'll make you ruler over much, meaning rule over much. I'm going to give you increase. Growth means increase, enlargement, expansion, development. He was faithful over a little, God is going to expand him and increase him and make him rule over much. Growth is fastened to faithfulness. It's connected, attached to, linked to. Get it? Yes. Okay, and then it says here, and I will make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Boy, you're going to experience joy from the fruit of faithfulness. Amen. Doesn't it make you feel good? Yes. You know, the Bible says, and I'm... Um, Hebrews 11.6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to God must believe that he is. So you should live to please God. You get it? So whatever you do, remember this. God, I'm not going to do that. That's not pleasing to you. I'm not, I am not doing that. Right? I'm not even going to lie. If that means I'm going to get in trouble, I'm just going to get in trouble. That's what happened to Steve. He was at work one time. He made a huge mistake. He thought, I'm not getting ready to lie. If I get fired, I just get fired. It really was a mistake. And God honored that faithfulness to him. He didn't lie because God, you know what's wrong with a lot of folks? You lie, so you think God's going to lie to you. That's why a lot of people can't receive from God after they repent. They walk in condemnation because you've told so many lies. You think God is just like you, but God is not like you and me. God cannot lie. He will not lie because he cannot lie. 
you should adopt that attitude. Amen. Verse 22, and also he that had received the two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents, and behold, I've gained two other talents beside thee. He said unto him, well done, you good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So the fruit of faithfulness will produce joy. Isn't that good? 24. You know, I can only imagine, and this is just an imagination, how Jesus felt after he went through that um, death experience on the cross. But the joy that came afterwards. Wow. And they were up in heaven, and they, there were seven seals. And they looked around, his angels said, we have nobody to uh, open the seals. And somebody else said, I got it. The Lamb of God, the one who was faithful, the faithful high priest, the one who was slain, he's worthy to loose the seven seals. In 23, his Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Now look at verse 24. And then he which had received the one talent, say the one talent man. Yeah. Are you a five talent man, a two talent man, or a one talent man? Or a no talent man? Well, food for thought. The one talent man came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you, did, you have not strong. And so I was afraid. He's lying. Remember I told you I can detect a liar real well. This man was lying. You know what? If he was really afraid, he would have done something with it. He said, I was afraid. He just said here, I knew you were a hard man. Right. Well, if he really was afraid and knew he was a hard man, you think that he would have been afraid and he said, I'm not suffering the consequences from this hard man. I'm afraid, so I'm going to invest his money. I'm going to do something with this. He wasn't afraid. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the earth. And lo, here's your talent. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful. Say lazy. lazy. Or you could say unfaithful servant. You know what? When you're unfaithful, you're just simply just showing that you're lazy. You go, oh, 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 women, we baptize him. Well, um, I'm, I, I, you know, I, I need to get over this. I, I'm, I, I, I'm just a procrastinator. Uh-uh. That's a nice word for lazy, being lazy. I just procrastinate. No, you're just lazy. You're unfaithful. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou slothful or unfaithful servant, that if you knew that I reaped where I did not sow and gather where I have not strived, you should have at least, now listen at this, you should have at least deposited my money in the bank, say the exchangers. Exchangers. Some at the bank. And then I would have received a little interest. Now verse 28. Now take therefore the talent from him, say the one talent man, one talent. and give it unto him which has ten talents. God don't think the way we think. Did you get it? Well, I deserve it. I earn it. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, you know, every man is right in his own eyes. You think you deserve it. You think you earn it. But were you faithful? I know somebody right now. Well, I don't know why they keep uh, passing, me, passing me up for all these promotions. But are you faithful? Wait a minute. This is what they said. Well, they must be prejudiced. See, I, that's baloney. You're talking to the wrong woman. Because I got a whole lot of promotions on my job in the corporate world. I clam the corporate ladder. Did you hear me? Why? Because God saw me faithful. That's right. yeah. You get it? And because I was faithful, then God allowed them to see me as being faithful. So you call it the blame game. You can't blame nobody but yourself. It's you standing in need of prayer. It's not them, it's you. In verse... Um, 28 again, take therefore the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. Now, he's going to tell you why he's going to give it to the one that has 10 and not the one that has 2. For unto everyone that has, sh more shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not, even that which he, ha he has, that will be taken away from him. And cast you the unprofitable servant. So if you're not being faithful, you're not making progress, you're unprofitable to God. 
and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Luke 8, 18, and I end here. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faithfulness on the earth? It's so vitally important that you develop the fruit of faithfulness in your life. Amen? Amen. Be faithful to your family. Above all, be faithful to God. Your allegiance, your loyalty is to God Almighty. Jesus came to Peter. He said, Simon Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I, I think, I guess you pronounce it, filio you, brotherly love, I care for you, I'm affectionate for you, I'm fond for you. Jesus said, um, feed my sheep. He looked at Peter again, he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you, I'm fond of you, I care about you. Jesus asked Peter the third time, this time he got through to Peter, do you agape me? Do you unconditionally love me, Peter? Peter said, now, Lord, you know all things. You know that I adore you. I love you. I worship you. He got it then. He said, well, feed my lambs. Do you know in order for a preacher, any preacher, to feed God's sheep, they have got to be faithful to God Almighty. Because when the sheep is unfaithful, you got to have something that you got to lean on. You hear me? This scripture just come up. I'm going to see if I can quote it. It's in the book of Proverbs. Um, an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. An unfaithful man, now listen carefully, is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. What is God saying? You got a broken tooth? You can't bite down on anything. You can't put any weight on it. It'll hurt, right? If you got a joint, a foot out of joint, you're going to walk, you're going to kind of limp on the other foot. Let's say my right foot is out of joint. You're going you're gonna to kind of put the weight on the other side and not on that foot out of joint. What God is saying when you're unfaithful, I, I won't trust me. I'm watching you. I am not. You, you can't put any weight on you because it'll hurt me if you're unfaithful. Just like you wouldn't put any weight on a bite down on a, a broken tooth or put weight on a, a foot out of joint, unfaithful man, you can't put any weight on him. You can't, you can't trust him. They'll hurt you. May not believe it, but that's what he told me. Okay. Did you get that? Yeah. I'm trying to help you. So in other words, you know why God told me to teach you unfaithfulness? Because he wants you to change now. Because if you don't, you're going to miss your promotion. Something can be the perfect will of God. And you can mess that up. So it's time to correct it now. And listen at this. You don't have to be afraid of Pastor Pam, but you need to respect Pastor Pam and Pastor Dave. Did you know that? Did you hear me? He said, if you've done it to the least of these my pastors, whatever, men and women of God, he said, you've done it unto me. You get it? You call it respect. You call it reverence. If you disrespect me now, this is a no-brainer. I wonder what you're going to do later on down the road. An unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You can't put any weight on it. You can't lean on it. You can't depend on it. Because if I put all my weight on my ankle and I got problems, I can't depend on that ankle. That ankle going to let me down. If I have a tooth broken, I bite on an apple, I can't depend on, I can't depend on that. That side that don't have, uh, you know, the, whether the tooth is gone, I can't depend on that. That's going to hurt. It's not dependable. An unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Can God depend on you? Can he? Yes. Don't miss your promotion. God, Jeremiah 29, 11. You see how preachers are? It's not my fault. I said I was going to quit. The Holy Ghost didn't quit. Sure. Jeremiah 29, 11. This is what God said. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. Thoughts, of pl thoughts and plans of good and not of evil to give you a future and to give you a hope. Now, that's God's perfect will for you. He's trying to give you a future and he's trying to give you hope. So you might as well make the correction now because if you don't make it now, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to end up right where, where, you, where you started this thing with nothing broke, busted, and disgusted, with nothing. 
because you're unfaithful. One more time, I want you to get this. An unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You can't put any weight on it. You can't depend on it. So you still got time to change it around, folks. Amen. Did you get that? Yes. Now, when I come up here, when before I step up here, always, always, always make a decision. I'm saying what God tells me to say. Amen. Do, I don't care who don't like it, who it connects me to or disconnects me from. It doesn't matter to me because God is my source and not people. Amen. He's trying to help you. Did you hear me? He's trying, he loves you. He's trying to help you. He doesn't want you to miss your destiny. Stand with me. Stop right there.